was informed by um, modus, I think the first one I used was ponens, right? This was informed by modus ponens. And here's where we justified it and fleshed it out a little bit, right? I remember when he said modus ponens, I can go back and see this, this section is modus ponens. Remember, we did all of the logic first. We did all of the logic before we did any of the writing. So in theory, and I could have done another page, but I chose not to, we could have fleshed out all of the logic in its rigorous sort of logical form. We did all of the logic first, and then we wrote it. So that this paper, though it's not the greatest written paper ever, I know that, but, but it's better than most. <laughs> and this is, you know, it is what it is. But this paper is, this two-page paper on, on the environment and why the environment is important and water conservation, both in terms of quantity and quality, and why that is important for the 21st century, um, plays a much, 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 much deeper role. For me, it plays a much deeper role. Partly, part of that role is my own personal motivations, which I don't disclose, but part of it is an attempt not to hoard what I've used to bring me a tremendous amount of intellectual ability. I want to share it. I want to share it. I want to share it with people so that you can do it, right? So that you can, so that you can do it and you can hopefully one day attain expert mastery and then you can challenge me and I can have a worthy opponent. I want to have somebody that I can fight theoretically, right? I want to have a new generation, right? You know, all of, I, I put, I put Zizek and Chomsky Galtung, I put all of those dudes in the same sort of cohort of academics. They're all in that cohort for me. And it's a freaking powerful cohort. <laughs> those dudes are no lightweights, right? Those are, those, are, those are the heavy, 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 heavy hitters. And then you have about 30 plus years removed from that cohort, me and this generation. And I don't know who my colleagues are yet. I'm still trying to establish myself as a, as a global authority in genocide studies, and I will do that. There's no question about it. I've already done that, but I'm going to do it more rigorously, right? Um, and I've gotten the approval of, of a lot of my peers for my research and for my work ethic. But the idea is that I'm part of this new cohort of academics that's emerging now. They still have the ranks, and they should have it. We're not rushing them out. There's no exit, exit stage left sign, but we know inevitability is at stake for all of us being deaf and as these tier one researchers tier one academicians pass we cannot we cannot we cannot let all of their work and all of their progress stop it that's not what happens we don't do that this next generation and I'm I'm not getting emotional here <laughs> Mm. Caught me off guard. This next generation of academicians, we have an obligation, and I take it very seriously. We have an obligation to receive the batons from the powerhouses before us to learn what they did, but not to stand in such reverence of the systems that they designed and constructed that we are indebted, you know, prima facie to their thinking. But we have a reverence, a respect, a sense of awe for the work that they did, and we, as this next generation of academicians, create something new and move human reason and progress to another level. That's what I'm about. And this series is for everybody, but this series is especially for the cohort that's on team with me. And I want to know who you are. And let's collaborate. Give me a call. Hit me up in the office. Let's, let's build something. Let's do a system. Let's, let's do this. But this is how I roll. You know what I'm saying? This is how I roll. You don't necessarily have to be on this level, but I want you to know who I am and what I'm doing. Because when our time comes, my cohort comes, after they've been dead for 20, 30, 40 years, and we're approaching that inevitability, I want the next generation after us to recognize, hey, Dr. Campbell and these men and women, these academicians, they did a lot of work. They spent their life constructing this stuff. They spent their life to this. And it's documented. <laughs> and we have this overwhelming sense of obligation. That's how this goes, dude. There's, there's no stopping the machine. It won't stop for any of us. No man, no woman on the planet is important enough 
to get the system to stop. It will never stop. And it's my obligation to make sure that I do, and I send a signal to the world that I'm ready. You feel me? I'm ready. I still got a lot to do to prove myself, um, but I'm ready. And I want my cohorts uh, to be ready as well. So I'm so glad that this is over because it was the most arduous. It was the most arduous of um, lecture series to compile, but the gratification, the satisfaction, the thanks that I have for all the feedback uh, and and the Cynthia, like Cynthia, like super shout out to you. Seriously, this huge impact, right? Just, and this is a quick side note, people, and then I'll be done. I want to end on this note. We didn't have, me and this person didn't have a huge exchange. It's not like we are friends. I've never physically seen anything other than a still image of this person, which is fine. That's actually how I want it. <laughs> and she just said something in passing, and it created all of this. As a side note, people, as a side note, I am made out of pure diabolical evil steel. Nothing really hurts me that you say. It really doesn't. Because I'm very, very confident where I am. But other people aren't like me. And you need to think that the product of all of this work came from maybe four or five words that this one woman said. She said, she said something in passing almost that touched something in me that made me do this. She didn't ask me to do this. I did this because something that she said, I don't even remember what it was anymore. And I'm not going to try and look and find out what it was that she said, but something she said in passing hit me with such a profound sense of obligation that I constructed all of this based on 15, 20 words, she might have said. What you say to people is important, right? So for all of you trolls, for all of the haters, when you say this, when you say evil, stupid, retarded, hurtful crap, for other people who aren't as strong as me, you're doing a huge amount of impact. You're, you're putting a huge amount of bad energy into the world. And I promise you, with everything that I have, with all the power that I can muster, I'm going to make sure that karma comes to visit you. I promise you. I'm that type of dude. Believe me when I tell you that. So, you know, be careful what you're going to say. Like, the, the, the saying is, if you don't have nothing, and I know, and I know, and I love it. I know that when I say this, the trolls are going to come on this video at that point and just hate. And hate and, hate and hoard. Hate and stream. Hate stream. That's how people are, right? People, they don't have anything nice to say. They're feeling that because they can't do what I can do. They don't even have the courtesy to say something nice to someone else. So they say evil crap. With me, it just makes me stronger. It makes me want to prove more. So I'm going to work regardless. I'm that type of manic freaking addict. You say positive stuff, I'm going to work. You say negative stuff, I'm going to work to prove you wrong. There's no hope for me. My destination has been sort of forged. But for people who don't have the confidence that I have, for people who don't have the education that I have, for people who don't have the self-assurance and the self-reliance that I have, I don't really depend on any other human beings. But the idea is for them, you know, just think about what you say before you say it, right? Because when you say it, it means something. It changes stuff in people to say it. And for yourself actualize the things that you want to be by saying things that are positive about yourself. Right? When I say I'm the next generation of the cohort that's taking the rings from the rings from uh, you know Chomsky, Galtong and Zizak and, and the rest, that's that's pretty ballsy because I don't compare to those dudes. I'm brand new. But I'm telling you that's where my eyes are. And I'm gonna do the work that's gonna get me into the position where where I am I am uh not there just for, for the sake of being seen, but I'm there because I can assume the obligation that comes with, with being a, a social public uh, intellect, right? So, again, enough of the, 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 the rambling. Um, rather exhausted, but definitely fulfilled. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.